Hello guys, Michaela here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another speed build. Today I'm finally showing you this haunted house that I built in the world of Copperdale like maybe six months ago. It's It's been a while since I built this and I had it in my kind of a queue for the YouTube for quite some time now but I just kept pushing it and pushing it uh, but I'm finally showing you um, because I really like it. So I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, this was in the era when I wanted to start a legacy challenge and this is actually a house for the first generation of the rainbow legacy challenge created by Soul Soul Mally over on Instagram and this is the kind of the house for the first challenge. So it was built for that purpose but because I later on decided I did not have a lot of fun with the, shell with the rainbow legacy I decided to kind of keep it, but as like a normal speed build on my channel. So it's a haunted house for a grandmother and her granddaughter in Copperdale. And I absolutely love it. So the, the theme um, of, of the build is kind of like, it's a haunted house. There is lots of red because that's the color that the first generation is all about in the challenge. Um, and the main, the air of the challenge is a high school student, so that's why it's in Copperdale. Um, the main packs for this are high school years and paranormal, which is what I was trying to use for the build uh, mostly. And I really like how it turned out. It's like a kind of suburban looking home um, with a bit of a modern touch, I feel like. I used my favorite windows that came with Snow Escape that I'm absolutely obsessed with ever since the pack came out and I use them pretty much in every build that I do. But I really enjoyed it. So technically there is, there is space. There It could be turned into a family home because there is one bedroom that is sort of uh, unfurnished, which I filled with like boxes and stuff, which I thought would be for the future child of the heir of the challenge. So you could turn that into like a toddler, infant bedroom, whatever you wanted. Um, so there is that space. We'll, you'll see it when we get to it uh, later, uh, later on. Um, so the build is on a 20 by 15, my favorite side of, uh, favorite size of lot. Um, it's a two bedroom, two bathroom house, but as I said, there is one unfurnished bedroom that could be turned into a bedroom as well. And the house comes in at 73,811 uh, simoleons. And yeah, I really like it. I never built the haunted house um, type lot before, uh, but I really like it, especially since, you know, the house comes in with like the ghosts and stuff. I did test it. Um, because I started the challenge, the legacy challenge that comes with the house, or comes to the house, comes into the house, it lives in the house. Uh, so I did try um, and play with it for a little bit. So I did try and I got some of the ghosts. I even got the like main ghost that's, uh, I have no idea what they're called, but it's like the ghost that um, kind of shows you around, I guess. And it was really cool. So I really think that's like a really nice idea with um, the different lot types. Um, yes, yeah, so I built this, as I said, like half a year ago. Um, and it's been sat on my desk for a very long time. So I did not use items from some of the recent packs in here. Um, and I don't know, I really like it. Um, I changed the this time of year as well because uh, before that I had probably autumn because the, the trees were kind of dead and everything so I think I switched to summer which is like my favorite time of year to build in or like favorite season to build in in the game. Um, I know that some builders kind of talk about it um, so whenever I build stuff I make sure that I have summer if I'm not building like a specific for a specific season. So I have summer on and I also make sure to put a heat wave on because that's kind of what makes the house look the best. I always make sure that the lighting hits the front of the house. Um, so yeah, that's why I sometimes don't build on certain lots because they're really weird to work with. Even though I've been lately thinking about making my own save file in like different worlds um, and 
I, if I do that, I would have to kind of use all of the worlds, uh, some, all of the lots in a certain world. So you'd have to make everything work, I guess. But I mean, the problem is, if you build it, it's fine. You can build whenever you want. You kind of, you can kind of build however you want to. But the problem is with the gallery pictures, because then they have certain orientation, uh, some things work, some things don't. And it's so frustrating when you build a house that has like the perfect lighting, and then you go, you want to upload it to the gallery, and, you know, it's the different orientation. Like, I, I, yesterday and the day before, I worked on um, a show of townhouses in uh, San Sequoia, I believe, and there is such a beautiful light. It's like the long 40 by 20 lot, which is like a very quirky and different size, but it was perfect for this. I built four kind of eco-modern townhouses that I'm going to furnish for different like families, households, and I oriented it towards the water apart, and the lighting hits really beautifully there. But then when I went to upload the shell to the gallery, I realized that you have to turn it around for it to face the front on the gallery. But the lighting from that angle is absolutely horrible. Yeah, I, I think that's like kind of like the whole idea about builders complaining about the fact that we cannot choose the angle uh, that we take or like that show up on the gallery when we upload builds. Because you can do that with rooms. You can change, you can change the angle uh, of the room when you upload them to the gallery, but you cannot do that with lots, and it's super frustrating. Especially when some lots have like a tree obstructing them in the view that goes on the gallery, which is like insane. <sighs> anyway, uh, let's go back to the belt. So I went for a style that is like kind of rustic, more traditional, and I really like it. It's not a style that I go for very often, um, because I am a modern a kind of person, but I really like it. I think this house is generally a lot out of my comfort zone, because as a person who, A, doesn't really do kind of traditional suburban homes very often, and B, as a person who hates red, <laughs> this is like a big step out of my comfort zone, because there is a red, it's a suburban, it's like a traditional kind of more uh, of a interior, so yeah. I think I still managed to find some ways to bring more modern touches, um, like the bookcase next to the stairs. But I really like this kind of rustic vibe. And um, because, you know, the, the same that lives here, the, the heir of the challenge, uh, lives with their grandma. Um, so I felt like um, it really wanted to capture the kind of grandma feel of home, which is a very stereotypical way to do it, because obviously not all grandmas need to have a home that looks like this, but I wanted, I was going for the um, stereotype, I guess, and I really like it. Um, I went with these counters from Cottage Living. That looks absolutely, that look absolutely beautiful, especially in this like dark rich brown color, and I really like them. I don't <laughs> because I built modern stuff. I don't use them very often, but they're really, really uh, pretty. Um, as I said, I used a lot of stuff from um, Paranormal, so I used the couch. I really like the red swatch, which is weird since I don't like red, but it's like a really nice red, and with the blue kind of cushions and uh, details, I really like that. Um, another modern thing that I kind of um, did here was is the fireplace. Um, because I could not fit like a normal one because I wanted to keep the window here So that's why I decided to go for uh, this modern one because it's smaller than uh, the rest and I really like the living room I really like um, how how I don't know. It, it's just cute. I don't know what what I like so much about it apart from paranormal and high school years, which are kind of the packs that were um, Most prominent for this um, generation of the challenge. I also used quite a bit of cottage living. I used um, the, the console table in, in the living room is from cottage living, the counters are from cottage living, um, and some of the details are from cottage living as well. So yeah, I, I really had fun with this build. Um, I also wanted to kind of give you an update on my school, situ school situation. I'm currently going through a teaching, so something that we call a teaching practicum, which is essentially um, like supervised teaching practice. So we had to do 
kind of 12 hours of observations, six and six on each of my subjects, which is geography and English. So I had to do six observation hours in one subject and six for the other. And then I have to teach um, 12 in geography, 12, 12 like lessons and eight in English. So I'm kind of right now when you're watching this video, I have week two after um, finished. So I only have one more week to go. Uh, so most of the stuff they need to get done are done now, which is really nice. And so far I'm having a lot of fun. Honestly, I was not sure if teaching is for me, if it's something that I will be good at, it's something that I'll be enjoying and so far I've been loving it. Even though it's like secondary school which is not the kind of school that I would like to go to, I prefer grammar schools um, because I went to one and I really like um, the kind of system that goes behind them but I'm I'm really enjoying it. I, I Right now when I'm recording the voiceover um, I, I taught four lessons in total, two in geography and two in English, and it was really nice. I don't know if the kids are just nice because I am someone else, or if they see um, kind of how nervous I get, but so far so good. It was it really surprised me how much I enjoyed this. And apart from the fact that we now, because we have to kind of report back to our um, didactics teachers, um, so we have to really plan Thoroughly, through. I can't tell the word. So we really need to put effort and time into the planning. Everything needs to be kind of written down. What we want to do, what we want to use. So it takes a lot of time. But in general, because when I see how the teachers are actually prepping for their lessons, you know, I really think that's something I could do, and something that I could see myself doing. And you know, when I finished uh, school next year. So I'm. So far, really pleasantly surprised with myself because I did not see that coming. I thought that it would uh, rather discourage me from the job, but I think it's done the opposite actually. So I'm, I'm very happy about that um, because yeah, I can see myself doing this, even though I'm not sure like if I want to do that for the, my entire life because still it's quite a demanding job. Um, mentally but in general I really like it I really enjoy it so far so I'm happy about that so yeah as, as a person who really kind of struggles with seeing the future uh for myself like seeing a future job and like how my life is going to look in the future I really am happy about this kind of change because as I said, I expected it that it would rather discourage me from the job, but it's done the opposite, and I'm really, really happy about that. I think it has a lot of lots to do with the fact that I have amazing mentors at the school that I'm at. I'm at a local kind of secondary school, and the teachers that I am um, kind of paired with, they're my mentors. They kind of help me with everything. They are amazing. They are really. Um, really tell me what to do, tell me what they want from me, what they expect from me, they give me really good feedback, so I'm really um, enjoying the, the work with them. Um, as I was, again, I was a bit scared that it's not, not gonna be great, but oh, oh my god, I'm, I'm really enjoying it, um, which I'm really stoked with. Um, so yeah, now we, I completely talked over the bedroom for the air of the challenge. This was when you can see the boxes here, which is kind of the room that you could turn into a room for a kid or a toddler or um, anything that you didn't want. And here is kind of the main bedroom for the grandma. So again, that could be like a um, room for the parents. So you could turn this into like a four, um, four sim house. Which I think is really nice, um, since it's like a very oh, cool place and you could live with a family. It has a nice small backyard, um, everything that you need downstairs as well. There's also the kind of like a medium room, uh, which I have no idea how that skill works. But I also placed that in there because that was one of the requirements for um, the challenge as well. So yeah, that's almost everything for today's video. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here with me. If you want to download this build, you can get it on the gallery. My ID is Michaela Sims YT, or you can get the trade files in the description box below, as always, on my ko page. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It would really mean a lot to me, and you will make sure that you never miss a video that I upload. And yeah, thank you, and have a great day.
I will see you in my next video. Bye. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay, I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays, way back a year ago. I've changed for the better this time. I thought I would never be fine. I strive just to say I'm alright. And for the first time in a long time, I'm alright. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay I move on each and every day The past is where it stays Way back a year ago